Brazil is in a state of natural disaster. It really is in a dramatic state. The Rio Grande do Sul state in the south of the country has been hit by the worst floods since 1941. And currently they have caused more than 80 deaths, 300 injured, over 110 missing, tens and tens of thousands displaced, and half a million people without electricity and clean water. The rains have been particularly intense in the surroundings of the capital Porto Alegre, where 150 millimeters of rain fell in one day, the quantity that is expected to fall in this area throughout the entire month of April. The scenery is truly devastating. This zone is full of rivers that overflowed violently. On Sunday, May 5th, the Guayba Lake reached a record level of 5.31 meters, never even recorded during the devastating historic flood of 1941. And entire cities are literally isolated. Roads and bridges destroyed, landslides, a partially collapsed hydroelectric dam has caused the flooding of several towns along the Takari River Valley, even killing 30 people. The capital of the state, Porto Alegre, is completely flooded, the international airport is closed, and search teams are looking for missing on jet skis. Before we explore the causes of these floods, what precisely led to such a violent event, allow me just a brief moment, precisely two seconds, to send our thoughts and prayers to the victims, their families, and all the individuals involved. Small parenthesis, if you appreciate these flash updates and you don't follow us yet, it would help a lot if you'd click the follow button because it helps us with our divulgation work. But let's go back to the explanation. How did we get here? What are the causes of this flood? In reality, it was a combination of several factors. Indeed, in the last days of April, in the northern part of the country, a high-pressure system over Brazil and temperatures significantly above the seasonal average, even by more than 10 degrees, created unstable systems, leading to instability with forecasts of storms and possible flooding in Rio Grande do Sul. The first civil protection alerts were in fact issued on 20 Tagod April. The storms arrived between April 27 and 28. They were caused by a cold front of low pressure air coming from the Atlantic and the continuous steady flow of warm, humid air from the north. On April 30th, the rainfall indeed reached a peak of 149 emets north of Porto Alegre. Now keep in mind that here, throughout the month of April, it rains an average of 112 millimeters of water. So, in 24 hours, more rain fell than what we expect in an entire month. The situation worsened on May 2, when heavy storms from the ocean hit an area already saturated with water. There is another factor to consider, El Niño. El Niño is actually a very complex climatic phenomenon. It involves, and here I'm simplifying for clarity, the warming of the central eastern Pacific Ocean by at least half a degree Celsius for a duration of at least five months. It occurs cyclically, at most every seven years typically, and has a significant impact on the climatology of the entire planet. Last year, we experienced a particularly intense El Niño that peaked between December and January and is currently fading but still present. In Brazil, El Niño diverts rainfalls towards the south of the country, causing heavy rains and the risk of flooding while it leaves the north completely dry and with severe droughts, as happened in 2023 with dramatic droughts in the Amazon and three floods in Rio Grande do Sul. According to experts, El Niño contributed to the disaster of the last few days. Then there is global warming to consider, which not only amplifies the power of El Niño, but also increases the frequency and intensity of extreme weather conditions around the world. All this happens, among other things, three weeks after the tragic floods in the Arabian Peninsula, also record-breaking, where, let's remember, 19 people died. Is there a connection? Is it the fault of the climate crisis? We simply can't take a single extreme event and say it was solely caused by global warming. There isn't a cause-effect relationship for every single event. 
Although we can say that the effect of the climate crisis is to make disasters like this one in Brazil more frequent and more harmful. So, what caused the floods in Brazil was a mix of temperatures drastically above average, a strong Atlantic cold front, the presence of El Nino and, icing on the cake, global warming. Altogether, these elements cause the floods in southern Brazil. Is it an anomalous or recurring event? It must be said that in this region of the planet, floods are not a new occurrence. In fact, in 2023, there were three flooding events in July, September and November, which unfortunately resulted in a total of 75 victims. This is an expansive area where warm air masses originating from the tropical regions quite literally collide with the intensely cold air arriving from the Antarctic region. This clash is, so to speak, the ideal recipe for consistently generating heavy precipitation. However, it must be said that a flood like the one this May 2024, indeed, as I've already mentioned before, had not occurred since 1941. The affected area was more or less the same, and according to what was reported by a 2022 study published in the newspaper Cielo Brazil, on that occasion, 15,000 houses were flooded for 40 days. 70,000 people were displaced and the water reached the highest level ever recorded in the country up to now, 4.76 meters. That being said, thank you very much for following us to the end. I hope to have provided you with a more in-depth reading of this event. I'll see you next time, always here on Geopop, Everyday Science. Bye.